Hi everybody, I'm glad you're joining me today where I am going to talk about a really, really important matter and that is wisdom. An abundance of wisdom is what multiplies grace to you and I don't think we hear that too often and it may come as a surprise because you I I know I didn't, you know, think of wisdom as a door to abundant grace. But it according to scripture, it is. And we know how important grace is. I mean, that is the crux of the New Testament is that grace and peace be multiplied to us like it says in 1 Peter 1, right? And it's good for the heart to be established in grace, as it says in Hebrews 13, 9. And so we, we def, I don't need to convince you all, I don't think, that how important it is to be overflowing in grace. And we, we know that that is the crux of the matter when it comes to our walk of faith in Christ. But this time I'm going to be focusing on how wisdom is very important to God and how that can provide us so many benefits. And let's just start right off the bat here. Let's go to Ephesians 1 verse 7. And here it says, in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So don't we know that forgiveness is right at the center of the message of the gospel and in its in accordance or in proportion to the riches of his grace. So if you want to understand how greatly you are forgiven, just have a a very secure heart in your relationship with God by the fact you are so completely forgiven, it comes by this revelation of his grace toward you. But look here, if you follow on to verse 8, it says here, and, and it's speaking of his grace, it says, His grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Isn't that just a powerful little scripture right there? Because we know it's so interesting. It's like a, a gift inside a gift inside a gift. And we're kind of unpacking grace here. And we see that this abundant grace, well, it can abound to us, as it says right here, in all wisdom and prudence. And prudence, of course, is not a very typical word we use today, but it means mental activity. So you could just say deep thought, right? I mean, Your understanding of the kingdom of God doesn't just happen. You have to take time and think, think on these things, just as Mary did, right? She, she is noted as pondering these things in her heart. And that's what she would call meditation, right? So this grace just blossoms and abounds as we think on these things in all wisdom and prudence. And this is really God's goal from the very beginning. If we go here to Ephesians 3 verse 10, and actually let's read, start at verse 9. It says, And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent. So notice here, it was his uh, thought and, and plan from the very, 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 very beginning, hidden in God. It was secret until now. And the intent, as it says here in verse 10, 
that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this was his purpose that after all these eons of ages that it was this this secret mystery has been was hidden but now the intent is that it be made known by the church and look who it's being made known to the principalities and powers in other words all heavenly forces are being made aware of the spectacular wisdom that we have been given in Christ and look it's manifold, which means varied. So wisdom isn't just a one-dimensional thing, as it says right there. It's multifaceted. Who knows? It pro- it's probably infinite. God's infinite wisdom. And it's revealed through us, the church. So if it's going to be revealed through us, don't you think we would know about it? <laughs> we would know about it first, right? So I, you know, when I think of, when I read that, I think of a diamond, you know, when, whenever you go, not that I've gone recently, but when you go shopping for diamonds, don't the jeweler, they pull it out and they put the diamond in a very clear light and you can see all the many different facets and colors of that one diamond as the light goes through it. And it makes me think in context here that that's us. You know, we are living stones, literally, in the spirit realm. And we are a beautiful, as it says in Revelation, a beautiful temple of God. And so we are many, you know, being many, many parts to one body. You could say the the beautiful diamond, the body of Christ. And as the light of Christ and wisdom of Christ shines through us with understanding because it all comes through your revelation knowledge. God can't get something through you if he doesn't get it first to you. And it comes through your understanding. And like I said, you know, when we were reading that prudence, that little word prudence, mental activity. So you have to grasp these things and that's why we teach these things so that we can walk in revelation understanding of all these blessings of our inheritance many multifaceted wisdom that we've been given in christ and it is meant to now be revealed it's for it's been hidden for ages But at this time, it is revelation time now. And so that is God's goal from the very, very, very beginning is that we would reveal this multifaceted wisdom to the principalities and powers. What a what a great place of honor that we would be so equipped and furnished with God's kind of wisdom to astound and perplex our enemies and and angels too. It says in elsewhere, it says angels uh, desire greatly to look deeply into these matters, but because they aren't born again, they it, this this is not the kingdom of God isn't opened in this regard to them. It's open to us. That's what Jesus said. He said, the kingdom of God is in you. (laughs) So we are a walking, living, breathing, talking temple of God. And 
Praise God, when when we walk by the Spirit, when we open our mouths, it should always, it, it, it sh- if as we are walking by the Spirit, it should be a word and season, a word of life, of encouragement, of abundant grace to each other. We all impart and share grace among each other. We're all a connected body of Christ. And there's not just one who does it all and provides it all. But no, we all impart, you know, just like ligaments in a body or muscles are connected to the muscles and the muscles are connected to the bone. And, you know, we're all connected. We're the body of Christ and we all provide a very significant part. Every single person in the body of Christ is crucial. You know, just think of a little toe. You know, you think, oh, well, I'm just a little toe, you know, on the, on the body of Christ. <laughs> but hey, the, bo- the little toe is very significant. Think of when you bust up your toe walking by that coffee table. And man, if that gets out of joint, you know it immediately. And then you hobble the rest of the day, right? Well, maybe not. But but you see my point. It's, it's you know when something's not working right. And it's so, so important for us to each humbly acknowledge that Jesus needs us. He needs each one of us to to be receiving his abundant grace so that we can be a whole body of Christ where every joint is fitly joined in supplying grace one to another, right? And let's look here in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4. And I really, I just your quote unquote homework. If you can go back and read 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, it is jam packed with talking about God's kind of wisdom. But we're going to touch on it just briefly right here and point to the fact that it's not about human wisdom. As it says, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So that's God's kind of wisdom, is actually trusting in the power of God, not in ourselves, not in our fancy words. That's not wisdom, although many people think that. They think, oh, well, my vocabulary is, you know, really poor. I mean, my, my, I didn't even graduate from high school. So how in the world could I actually have God's kind of wisdom? Well, see, if you read those chapters, it says God takes the foolish things, the things that are despised by the world, and that is God's kind of wisdom, is, is the fact that he provides. Humanity doesn't provide. Human- He's not looking for people that have, you know, 32 degrees after their name, right? And the PhD and MD, and nothing, no offense if you are those things, because hats off to you, that takes lots of endurance and you know, we're, we're not here to bash these wonderful people that are such a blessing to us. <laughs> but my point is, is that to flow in God's kingdom, all we need is him. We don't need, he, he, didn't, he doesn't say, well, I'm calling you because I know how hard you have gone through seminary and you know the the all you could quote chapters upon chapters of the bible and so i see that you are looking pretty good to represent me god would say and no 
God would not say that. God is looking for those, you know, even as John the Baptist said, I must become, I must be lesser and he become greater. And that is the way of the kingdom actually is how much can you empty yourself of yourself? <laughs> you know, the, the world's wisdom is all about me. It's all about me. It's all about my pride and my lust for things. And, you know, it's all me focused, my abilities. And as it said, let's go back to that verse there. It's not about the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. That's what I was talking about. You know, the things of this world are nothing in comparison to God's wisdom. We speak, we who are mature, who understand these things of the Spirit, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, like I mentioned before, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. That is a powerful verse, I think. The wisdom of God, which has been hidden, but now it's revealed, right? God ordained it. God ordained his wisdom. Why? And for what purpose? Look at this. It says right here, for our glory. So we're just beginning here to touch on the benefits of wisdom. And when you say that being glorified by God is significant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, glorification, that word glory, let's, let me show you what that means. Literally. It's the word doxa. Greek word doxa right there. Glory. And it literally means an opinion, estimate, and hence the honor resulting from a good opinion. So in a very small nutshell, you could say when God glorifies you, he is saying, I have a very good opinion of you so that I honor you. God is honoring us. When we see that God has glorified us, has given us his glory, that means he has given us his honor. God himself honors us, has a good opinion of us. And why is that? You may think, oh, that's just blasphemous for you to say that, that God honors us. You know, normally people in the religious realm, they say, let's honor God. Let's glorify God. You know, and that's good. Of course, we glorify and we honor God. But to flip it around and say, God honors and glorifies us. Well, see, the reason why that flips people around is because it, it is totally against the grain of human wisdom. Human wisdom says, well, I got to get my own glory. I got to earn my way and, and get that honor and work really hard for that. But when you say you don't have to work for it, that God wants to give it to you as a gift, that just flips religion and religious mindsets on their side, just flips them over. It's, it's a mystery that they can understand with this because it comes by faith. It comes by understanding the kingdom of God and his way of doing things is completely upside down, or you could say right side up from the world's ways because he wants to glorify us. As it said right there, I just can't see that too many times. Let's go back to the verse. We speak the wisdom of God. This is the wisdom of God right here. In a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained. This was his goal. This was his plan. 
is that he would give us his glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, they made a big mistake from their perspective when they crucified Jesus. You know, it was a mistake for them, but not for us. God's plan came to pass, and now we are glorified in his name, not in the name of ourselves. So let's start talking about the, I'll call it the fringe benefits of walking in wisdom. And actually, Paul, the famous Ephesian prayers, and and specifically in Ephesians 1, I'm going to show you in a minute, But we can see, you know, here we are in these complicated times with, you know, amazing amount of information. Just, it's a highway, you could say, or highways of information. We are in the information age and need many, many things to walk in this life, live this life, and this prayer, which is so very important, you'll see that Paul doesn't pray for, okay, well, I see you you need healing. Let's pray for your healing, or let's pray for your job, or let's pray for your family, or, you know, just these these think concerns of day-to-day living. And we can see that that's not how Paul prayed, which is amazing. He really simplified his prayers. And I, let's just go right there. You know, he wrote half the Bible, basically. So, I should say the New Testament, I'm sorry. So, if he is so led by the Spirit to such a great extent to give us these holy scriptures for thousands of years, this is another example of of the wisdom that he was flowing in and we should follow. You know, this is Holy Scripture that I'll be reading. So we should cling to this prayer and pray it regularly because as we are going to see, and we have seen so far, that wisdom is the critical matter of excelling and abounding in the kingdom of grace, as exactly as we started with in Ephesians 1, right? So let's go here to Ephesians 1, 16. This is his prayer, and actually I'm going to start in verse 15. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So this is how he prays. Let's let's really grasp this important prayer. He says that that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So there we go again. That's very similar to the prudence that we talked about earlier. And notice that this wisdom and revelation, it's we are to abound with that in the knowledge of God, not in the knowledge of ourselves and what we can do or haven't done. But this is the goal, is that we would walk with a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. 
just simple, amazing, just several verses here, but they are so jam packed with all about God, <laughs> basically all about what, what he knows. We need to know what he knows. And so that's what we don't, we want to go to the source of the matter because he has provided every good thing laid up for us in Jesus Christ. So if everything has been freely provided to us that pertains to abundant life and godliness in Christ, well, then how do we receive that and walk in it and, and enjoy it? It's through this spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what we need to pray for because that's the key that unlocks that treasure chest of all those many blessings. You know, we, we talk about God's kingdom and his grace and blessings, but all these, you know, those, those terms are pointing to living an abundant life, of course. So when we walk in that wisdom, it's like we have our our pickaxe and we got our headlamp and we are good to go. We got the the shovel and we we are equipped to find those hidden gems of his kingdom. You know, it says God has hidden these things so that we would discover them. You know, he isn't keeping them. Let me clarify. He is not keeping these things from us. But like it says right there, the the impartation and the receiving of these things is through the key of wisdom. That's what unlocks your ability to enjoy these things that are already yours in the spirit. You have them all. It's amazing. You have all this. God has freely given this and laid up and ordained it for our glory, all in the name of Jesus. And it's unlocked when we, in our senses, our, our, our spiritual minds are enlightened with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's just like a light bulb comes on. It's like if you walk into a, a dark room, let's say it's the room where you store all your goodies, whatever your quote unquote goodies are. <laughs> you know, Let's just say this is the room where you keep it all. And it's so beneficial if you know where everything is. But listen, if you walk into that room, no matter how jam-packed it is, if the room is dark, you're not going to be able to enjoy any of it. You're probably going to hurt yourself, actually. And you'll think, man, I thought God provided all this for me and I can't find any of it. I don't see anything. Where is it? It's not happening for me. Well, see, when you say things like that, it's indicating that you haven't, you're not walking in that spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Because when you do, it's like flipping on the light switch. So simple. Notice it's not your effort. You know, when you walk into a room, I mean, is it really tiresome to go over there and flip on that light switch? Oh my gosh. No, it's not. And that's similarly, you know, as an example, in the spirit realm, it's none of you. It's all of God. He's the one. As Paul's praying there, I pray that God gives you that spirit of wisdom and of revelation. So that's that little flip little light switch flips that really doesn't take, it doesn't take any effort of yours, except you ask, you ask for it. And it says, God gives wisdom generously, as it says in James one, without condemnation, profuse amount of wisdom. So we just ask, I mean, that's pretty simple, pretty effortless, isn't it? We ask in faith and bam, we got it. You know, we just know things 
all of a sudden and you don't really know why, quote unquote. Well, yeah, you know why, because you asked for wisdom and God just revealed things to you. And you may even think, oh, well, that's that's just something I thought. No, it may be very well God speaking to you and you're taking it as just maybe a passing thought in your mind. Just grasp that and think on it, meditate on it and see, is God giving a, you a desire to pursue that thought some more? You know, that's that meditation. So when you think these thoughts, you after, especially after asking for wisdom, grasp hold of it and think on those things and see where you go with the Holy Spirit led mind and see what he will reveal even more to you, right? So going back to that verse, notice that there are benefits clear benefits to having this spirit of wisdom and revelation. And as I was saying, there's the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The light bulb has to come on and it's all through prayer, prayer that God would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Pray that regularly and watch your faith explode. You know, your walk of faith, your understanding of the kingdom principles and abundant grace just abound towards you so that you can receive all these many things that are freely given to you. They're already given to you in Christ, but you can enjoy them through wisdom and revelation because it's in the spirit. You know, these things that we're talking about, they're, they're not you know, oh, behind that door over there, you know, I mean, they're not in the physical, they're in the spirit. So the way you can receive and walk in these things is if you have a spirit of wisdom and revelation, it's, it's in the invisible realm. So you receive these things by faith. First, you, and that's a biggie because many, many, many Christians, they walk by sight. They don't walk by faith, just by practice, unfortunately. But we have to become mature walking by faith. When we, when we pray and ask for something in the invisible, we believe that we receive those things when we pray, not when we see it. But when we pray, bam, you got it. Don't say, oh, well, I haven't seen it yet. No, he does not lie. And Jesus said, when you ask, you receive. So quit. don't say, oh, I don't see it. It's not happening for me after you pray something like that. No, patience. <laughs> the faith, people love the word patience. You know, but stick to your guns. This is how you dig in. You grow in your roots with with the Lord is when you ask and sometimes you do see it immediately, but we live in a temporal world and sometimes it takes time to manifest spiritual things. So you ask and you receive it right then and... Then, as Jesus said, you shall have them. You receive when you pray and you shall have that you will possess them in the natural, not in the spirit, because in the spirit, you have them when you ask them. Just like that. Isn't that exciting? That is so exciting. No matter what you are asking for that pertains to abundant life that Jesus has freely provided for you, when you ask and pray, you receive them. And that's, that is a spirit of wisdom right there. That's walking by faith, which is wisdom. <laughs> and notice, like I'm trying to show you here, that the, the benefits of wisdom as it says right here, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. 
That is huge, 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 huge. You know, what that's talking about is your destiny in him. You're the great good expectation of his calling for you specifically. And you can only tap into that and walk in that when you have a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. So this is this is key because so many people are um, bored or they don't know an inkling of what their their very specific destiny is in God. And right there, it's showing you step one, one of the steps. I'm, you know, I don't know, you know, for sure if that's number one, but <laughs> but it definitely is accessed with a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Having your eyes, the eyes of your heart, of your understanding enlightened. That's how you walk. You begin to walk and you continue to walk and get to the end goal, walking in your calling. Praise God. So that's a huge benefit when you say for wisdom. And then another right there, another thing, thing is what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance is. And look where it is. Just like I said, very similar to what I said. It's in the saints. It's in the saints. It's in you. (laughs) It's not out there somewhere. Oh God, give it to me. Give it to me. See, this is when you have a spirit of wisdom and revelation, you realize, hey, I already got it. It's in me. It's in the saints. You are a saint, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That may be revelation knowledge right there for some of you. Isn't that awesome? You're not a sinner. Notice it doesn't say in the sinners. It says in the saints. You are a holy one. That's what saint means. You are set apart forever holy unto the Lord through his work. And your abundant inheritance that Jesus has laid up in store for you, it's in you. (laughs) So anybody out there want to walk in their inheritance, the rich inheritance that Jesus has provided? Anybody? Well, right there, it's walking in wisdom. It's by walking in wisdom and revelation. Isn't that Simply amazing. And look at that. It just goes on more. Nope. Right? Gospel is just more and more and more. And so that we can also know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So we can start experiencing the working of his mighty power in our lives also by the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Isn't that exciting? You know, to be able to see God's amazing, mighty working power, the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, working in your life in all its many ways. Isn't that wonderful? So those are just a a sprinkling of the benefits that we have walking in God's kind of wisdom. It's right at the heart of the matter, isn't it? So let's look at um, what they said about Jesus when he was walking in wisdom. So let's go here to Matthew 13, 53. It says, Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there, And when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and mighty works? Look at that. So right there, we see Jesus flowing in mighty works 
and they noticed that he walked in amazing wisdom. So you can see, just as we read in Ephesians, that walking in God's wisdom will help you w- reveal and experience God's mighty works and power also. They go together. You know, let's a- let's answer the question, actually. They said, where did he get this? Well, you can find it, or uh, one part of it, if we go to Luke. Here in chapter 2 of Luke, we're going to start in verse 46. And here, Joseph and Mary lost Jesus. (laughs) This is just such an interesting story. Uh, It says, after three days, they found him. They found Jesus now in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Even Jesus was asking questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why are you, were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So this is very, I think this is very symbolic, how it ends here mentioning that Jesus was increasing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So notice that right there, that's indicating a benefit of walking in wisdom. You know, we, we then not only enjoy the favor that we have with God through Jesus, but mankind definitely is very partial to God's kind of wisdom. You know, think of all the many crowds that would follow Jesus. He definitely grew in favor with man because the gospel is very appealing. When you're preaching the real gospel, people love to hear it. It's it's, um, refreshment and it's satisfying to the soul to know everything that Jesus has done for us, not what we have to do for God, but what Jesus has done for us freely and finished. He's finished the work. There's nothing left for us to do. (laughs) we just believe we just believe so it's a good good message it's all about what God wants to do for us freely but notice and this is how we can grow in wisdom too it says he was in the temple he was sitting among the teachers he was listening to the teachers and he was asking questions you know so he was learning you know he was here is the son of god and yet he had to learn too so we definitely need to learn too so if you are you want to be teachable is my whole point that's that's a one key to growing in wisdom but if you think you've heard a message 10 times and so man you know it now I don't need to hear that again. Or I've I've been a Bible believing Christian for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So who are you to tell me something new? You know, just that really stinky, prideful attitude. That's the opposite way of wisdom, okay? <laughs> that's going in the opposite direction. So If Jesus can sit among the teachers and listen to them and ask questions, well, it would do us good to do the same, right? 
And then also notice, and this is another, you know, we are talking about God's kind of wisdom and it is in conflict with man's kind of wisdom. It is opposed to what mankind thinks wisdom is. Mankind, their, their wisdom is, oh, well, I'm just going to, I can do this myself. I know all these things. If I don't know all these things, I'll find out myself. It's all about the person and their ego, right? Notice what the Son of God did. This is not trivial. It says that he went down with them here in verse 51 and was submissive to them. He was submitted to his human parents. And right there, immediately, it says he increased in wisdom and in stature. So if you are not going to submit to teachers, to, to God's wisdom as revealed in the word, you know, if you don't have a humble submitted attitude, a teachable spirit, then you aren't going to grow in wisdom. Jesus was submitted to his human parents. If he can do that, being God Almighty and full of glory with all knowledge, that's who he is, his deity in the spirit realm. But here in the flesh, he, it says elsewhere that he learned obedience. You know, you don't just say, oh, well, I know all things, praise God. But you have to, part of wisdom, as it says elsewhere also, that you reveal the wisdom you walk in by your actions. You know, you are learning obedience. A lot of people in the Western culture, they think learning is all about just head knowledge. But when you truly have learned something, you not only understand it, but you have put it into practice. So it's yours. It's become yours because you are working it out. You are walking in it. You are doing it. (laughs) And that's exactly what he did. He didn't say, well, yes, I submit to you, mother, father, and and then he went and did something else. No, he submitted with intention and in his actions to Mary and Joseph. And I'm sure that was, that's the first thing that needs to go is any ego you got. You know, humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. So when you find yourself in in turmoil or strife, a conflict, you know, as this situation was, he was lost. This was a bad situation. And he had to start with that step and, and learning submission first so that he could grow in his revelation of other things, you know, one step at a time. Just like a child, and he was a child, you know, your five-year-old child isn't ready for the Maserati yet. You know, they got to grow step upon step upon step, you know. Oh, have you cleaned your room yet, Johnny? Well, no. Okay, well, no dessert for you. (laughs) You know, I mean, you see what I'm saying. You you grow um, step upon step. And if Jesus had not been submitted to his earthly parents, he would have been stunted in his wisdom. Of course, this is all hypothetical, of course, but you see my point. If you're going to buck up against basic knowledge, well, then how can you expect to grow in wisdom? So... Good, good points from Jesus right there. He was in the house of the Father, in the temple. So that's a great, great point is we want to abide with God and in the Word and and allow ourselves to be trained, give us opportunities to think on things and ask questions, right? 
And like I said, this submission thing is a big thing. Let me show you here in Matthew 8. And this is the story of the centurion soldier here in verse 5. It says, When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word. Look at that. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For, this is verse 9, for I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. And he goes on some more, and then definitely in verse 13, it says, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. So notice, this is huge. In verse 10, going back up to this verse, notice Jesus was marveling at this man's faith. And he said, I haven't found any such great faith in all of Israel. Look at that. Such faith, such great faith. And how was it? How did that man get such great faith? Well, he was practiced of, of being not only in authority, of course, but he had gotten to that place of authority by being submitted to someone over him in authority. And he knew that when he said a word, you could take it to the bank I say one thing and he does it and I tell this other one come and he comes. So he he knew the authority of a person's spoken word. Having submitted to those in authority over him, he was well practiced in acting upon spoken words and believing those commands and not hesitating. And that attitude of submission to a word of authority allowed that man to benefit greatly by having great faith, consequently. If he hadn't been regularly submitted to words, acting on words, just it doesn't matter what he felt like. It was, you know, if he had a bad day, that didn't matter. If if his uh, commander over him said a word, he acted on it. And similarly, the point is, is now that he has others under him, he as an example, when they hear a word, they act on it. So they're, they are submitted to authority too. And the point is, is when we are learning submission, and in other words, you are trusting in God, not in yourself. You're submitted to him, regardless of the condition of your history, of your past experiences, what your feelings are right now. You know, you, you are putting your feelings, your thoughts, your attitude, all that, all of you, quote unquote, (laughs) under the authority of the word. And you'll know, you'll really, you'll experience and manifest the reality of those things that exist in the spirit as you do. Because those things are established in the heavens and when you submit to those things well then you are in position to then flow in those things and see that spiritual provision manifest as it did for this centurion soldier 
because he is well practiced in submitting to the authority of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Well, you know, he wasn't. I mean, this is a centurion. He was not a Jew. But the point is, is the submission is key. Because if you're not, like, it goes back to that added, uh, example I was given about being teachable, being submitted to God's authority in your life and hearing his direction and just going with that regardless of what it looks like out there or what you may feel like or fear or you know just the the things that seem contradictory to the direction that we're getting from God you have to practice it really does take practice cuz your flesh the wisdom of man wants to go against that, does not want to submit to the word of God. The pride of man is a powerful negative force that can stump your spiritual growth. So we want to get practice in putting our flesh down, saying, no, I'm not going to go with my emotions. I'm not going to go with what I think You know, I don't know all things. So flesh, you just need to take a back seat. I'm going to listen to what God said. He doesn't lie. He said he has healed me. His word that upholds the universe by its integrity is upholding me right now. I'm going with what the word says. And that that practice then we'll get you in a uh, condition of development of wisdom and you'll be growing in wisdom like Jesus said and he grew in wisdom and in stature through his submission his day in and day out to submission to his natural parents how humbling is that the son of God submitting to natural parents, <laughs> his creation. When you think about it, he is submitting to his creation. Is that just amazing grace right there or what? So if Jesus had to do that, well, then we being the body of Christ, we likewise have to get practiced in that too, or else we won't grow. We'll, we'll be stumping our growth then too. If we don't learn that attitude of submission, as it says elsewhere, you know, submit one to another, right? If we're bucking heads against each other, I mean, that's not God's kind of wisdom. That's a wisdom of man. Wisdom of man says, I'm going to do my way (laughs) in a nutshell. It's all about me. You know, whenever you want to know if if you're in God's kind of wisdom, we're going to be talking about this some some later. If you got I in there somewhere, well, then that's not God's wisdom. God's wisdom doesn't say, I'm going to do this and this is what I know and I'm going to, you better do it my way. And, you know, that's not and you can experience, I mean, even if you don't know the scriptures, you in that kind of state, you are experiencing turmoil, I'm sure. And that's an indicator right there that you're not walking by the Spirit. Because by the Spirit, you'll enjoy abundant peace and pleasures, as we will read next time in Proverbs. So... I'm going to have to stop right here and uh, pick up next time. Got some more to say on this for sure. (laughs) You know, the huge matter of wisdom. You definitely can't cover this in one hour. That's for sure. So take a lesson from Jesus and, and know and be comforted in the fact that if he had to learn wisdom and submission, that terrible S word, (laughs) then we do too. 
You know, we're not going to grow in our understanding and revelation, experiencing our inheritance and our great calling, amazing manifested power, if we're not going to submit to walking in a spirit of wisdom. So it, it, it affects many, many areas of our life. And it's so good to know these things that, oh, okay, I need, I need to allow the Holy Spirit to tweak me in that area now. Yes, Lord. <laughs> that fun, fun submission. But it's, it's all good. We're growing. Isn't that exciting? We're growing in our revelation, just like that centurion. He had grown in submission so much that... He, he had developed great faith that Jesus marveled over. And I'm sure everybody, every Christian, don't, I mean, if we, we are seeking after God's kingdom, I'm not, I know there's cr- carnal Christians out there, but for those who want to grow and, and enjoy the blessings that God has freely given us, then we do need to know how to flow and receive this wisdom that is ours. God wants us to walk in it so very greatly. Amen. So thank you for joining me today. I had lots of fun and look forward to sharing with you again next time. Have a great week. See you again. Bye-bye.